I'm Elizabeth and I'm here to talk about books. Rather one specific book today and that book is If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things by John McGregor. This was his debut novel. It was first published in 2002 and this edition has 274 pages. Last year I read Reservoir 13 by McGregor and that was one of my favourite novels of last year so I wanted to read more of his works and where better to start than at the beginning and I'm glad I did because I am really impressed by this book especially because it's a first novel and I'm here to tell you why. Uh, so let's start with what the book is about. Uh, in this book uh, we follow a small community or a street in the nor north of England uh, through one day in the lives of the people there. Uh, and we know uh, from the beginning that a terrible event will take place during that day. We don't know what it is and we don't know who it will happen to, but that event is there throughout the novel. Uh, sort of as an extra layer uh, of uh, meaning in the text. And I mean, that is not uh, an original idea. The, this happens in other novels as well. Uh, the two that springs to mind immediately for me is uh, The Secret History by Donna Tartt or uh, The Grass is Singing by Doris Lessing, which both are novels where uh, you've been told of a murder happening on the very first page of the book and then you go back in time to uh, to learn about the events leading up to that murder and that knowing the murder will happen creates an extra tension throughout the text and that's kind of the same thing that is happening uh, in this one uh, except it's not a murder but but still the the technicalities of it and the effects of it is the same and I think that works really well in this book. Um, so we have two timelines going on here. We have a we have the present day of the book where you have a first person narrator that has got some uh, some news that will affect their lives going forward. And this news has also made them think back to this this terrible event that they witnessed three years ago. So that's kind of the opening of the book, thinking back to that day. And then the other timeline of this book is naturally three years ago uh, and you follow a lot of characters during that one particular day. Uh, all characters living on the same street and witnessing this uh, event that you still don't know who happens to or exactly what it is. Uh, and this uh, second timeline, this three years ago timeline, is told from an omniscient point of view. Uh, you got a narrator that's able to just jump into the heads of every single person on the street, knowing what they're thinking, knowing their memories, in addition to of course knowing what precisely they're doing in that moment. So you have these two, these two uh, narrative strategies, if you can call it that, and I think they work really well together. Uh, they are also uh, quite different from each other, uh, which is part of why they work together, I think. Uh, it's uh, in well, One thing that's different is that in the first person narration, people have names. So this person remembers the names of friends uh, in the street. Uh, Whereas in the other uh, more impersonal uh, narration, uh, people are just known by where they live and what they look like. So you've got the young man at number 19, you've got the man with the moustache, you've got the woman with the red hair and so on. And part of the joy of reading this book was to try to piece together the puzzle of the named characters in the first person narration and the uh, not named people in the other and just see if you could understand who who is who basically and also to try to figure out who the first person narrator actually is in the other timeline so that was uh, that was interesting also uh, there's just a subtle way uh, a subtle difference between 
how the two story parts of the story are told uh, because the the omniscient narrator obviously knows everything so everything can be uh, written as statements uh, whereas the first person narrator can only know the world from their point of view uh, which means there are a lot more qualifications in that part of the writing so you will have more seemingly, supposedly, maybe this, stuff like that. Uh, there's also a physical difference to how the two uh, parts are written. I'm looking down now because I'm trying to find an example. But the first person bits are written like this, where you have lines that are slightly in from the edges, whereas the other uh, is written like normal blocks of text. Uh, and this was also something I, I enjoyed. I thought it was very... There is a great attention to detail in this novel. Uh, I also really liked the language, uh, the, the writing itself. It flows really well. Uh, there's a rhythm to the language. There are a lot of very long sentences divided by commas, which is something I, I really like in general. It's part of my personal taste, I guess. And also, it's fairly straightforward, even though there are some metaphors and similes uh, that makes it a bit more flowery, the language. But um, a lot of the time, uh, I feel that distracts from the story in novels because it makes me stop and think about the expression, this novel expression that the author has come up with and a lot of the time I'm not on board with what the author will try to tell me. I won't be able to see the way he or she has intended. But in this book, whenever there are um, metaphors, I still stop and think about them but I think, yes, that's an apt description. Uh, I can see this in my head and uh, that was really impressive to me because for me, that is a big part of what I call good writing, is authors that manages to do exactly that. Uh, and also I think the places where I stop to think about these things, it's intentional that I'm supposed to stop and take a break. Uh, so that's another part of what I mean by attention to detail. Um, the other part I really enjoyed about this book is how you get to know the characters uh, because uh, you, you have this one person that you will get better acquainted with than the rest because it's a first person narration but you also get really close to the others even though you jump around a lot uh, and you sometimes you only get like five or six lines about a certain character, there's a lot of stuff packed into those short paragraphs about each person. And as the book progresses, the passages about each person also gets longer. So you start off in a fairly general way, uh, learning about exactly what they're doing. And what they're doing are fairly mundane things. They are getting out of bed, they're quarreling, they're putting the kettle on. There are kids playing in the streets, there are uh, a group of kids coming home from an all-night rave, going to bed when everybody else is getting up. Uh, so, I mean, the things going on uh, are not dramatic. Uh, it's a fairly quiet and unassuming story, but just knowing that something bad is going to happen to someone in this street uh, is enough to make that tension and that makes made this drive for me to keep reading on because I wanted to know and also I didn't want to know. Uh, in fact, uh, I've, I've been annotating this book and at the top of the, b before the last chapter I wrote I don't want to read on because if I don't read this chapter the bad thing won't happen. But of course I read on and the bad thing happened and it was sad. But yeah, what, what I was saying about the characters is that as the book progresses, I
get increasingly involved in the characters and they feel more and more like whole people to me and I get to know their backstory and for everything I get to know, for, for every time I get close to someone I'm thinking no 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 not this person please let this person be safe and then you go on to the next person and no 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 not this person let this person be safe so that's uh, well, well I, I would call that a success. I think that's what McGregor is trying to achieve and uh, at least for me he definitely achieved it. And I really like this way of telling the story and that's also what I liked about Reservoir 13. It's the same kind of storytelling that you saw in that book. That You get this uh, collective uh, story about lots of different... Like, all, all the people are different part of a jigsaw and together you make a big picture or a mosaic or well I don't really have my metaphors straight I'm guessing <laughs> I'm hearing but anyways you, you get this bigger story a, a story that is bigger than any one of its characters that I really enjoyed um, and I also think that McGregor does a really good job of describing or characterizing people in just the tiny details uh, so so you, as I said you don't get always get to hear a lot about each person but you got always get that one telling detail that gives you a hint on who they are and then like five chapters on you will get another detail that fits well with the last one and together you just you, you get this whole picture of a person uh, is what I'm saying and there's also something about how these two way of narrating the story uh, and what is what is being revealed to you at what time that really works well and you get this story in the end where everything is connected and it doesn't feel forced it feels like it, it feels like there were a lot of coincidences that went into having this terrible event happen but it feels believable that it would happen that way and uh, even though I thought I saw, a com saw the end coming or I thought I knew what was going to happen I was only half right there was some things I had guessed and other things that took me by a complete surprise so that was also a very satisfying ending to this book, however sad it was and had to be and you knew from the beginning it would be. So I think that was all I have to say about this book. Um, I would definitely recommend picking it up if you haven't read it already. Um, at least if you like these kind of quiet character driven stories uh, where the language is beautiful but there's not really that big of a plot to chase to the end of the book but it's definitely a recommendation for me. Have you read this or other books by McGregor? Any advice on what I should pick up next by him? I don't think there are that many to choose from to be honest but uh, any recommendations that might sound like something along these lines I'm very happy to hear. And uh, until next time, bye bye.